back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing us how to upload the raster data to PostGIS with the raster to PGSQL command line tool. So the first thing to do is to add the PostGIS raster extension to our PostGIS database. And we can do that by expanding on opening our PG admin, expanding the PostgreSQL testing databases extension. Then we create a new extension. Create extension PostGIS raster. Then we save. Perfect. So here it is. PostGIS raster. So this means we can now add a raster layer to our PostGIS database. Now let's go to KGIS to visualize the data I want to add and get some information about the data. So we go to layer, add layer, add the raster layer. By the way, I have a video on how to install QGIS and how to install PostGIS itself. So if you don't have them on your, on your Windows computer, I'm gonna drop the link in the description below so you can just check it out to install it. To add this DEM to PostGIS. So, this is DEM. The information I'm adding about this DEM is the SRID. So, I go to the properties to check the SRID information. So, it's 4326 EPSG 4326. Okay, that's fine. So, for us to use the raster to PGSQL, we need to add it to our system environment variable because the executable file comes along with PostGIS during the installation of PostGIS. Program files, PostgreSQL, 13, and then. So we have the raster to PGSQL somewhere around there. Here it is, it's an executable file. So we need to add this to the system environment variable so we can be able to use it from the command line. Actually, we can just type CMD and be able to use the tool right here or start to be just. I feel it's just better to have it you know, on our environment variable so anytime we open the command line without coming to this folder, I will type or start to PGSQL or start. Still going to be able to access it, so you see, we can't do that at the moment because it's not registered on the system environment variable. This is just what this is trying to tell us that the system does not know that this thing exists yet, so we need to add it. And adding it is as easy as opening the environment variable environment to edit the system environment variables, click environment variables. Then under the system variables, we go to path right here. Then we edit it. Now we are going to add a new path, which is the path to where the raster to PGSQL is, so that the system can always go there to find it anytime we want to use it in the command line. So the path, we are going to copy the path from here. Just click on raster to PGSQL. Raster to PGSQL. This is the part we need. Okay, perfect. So you can copy this now. Press Ctrl C, or you just right click and press copy. Then let's come back here. Edit the system variables path. Then add a new one. Then we paste it. So okay, okay, okay. So. If you type command prompt cmd and you type where I start to pgsq you shouldn't have that error again yeah perfect so that's the second step the next step is to check the capabilities of the command line tool by pressing where I start to pgsq dash g so these are the accepting formats Acceptable raster format by the executable file. So, virtual rasters, direct dataset, GOT. So, we were using DEM, which 
I believe is uh, a geotic as well. So it accepted. So let's just proceed and upload um, to postgis. So to upload to postgis, it has some acceptable parameters which we can see by type of right start with PGSQL. Yes. So those are the acceptable parameters, acceptable options. Dash S for SRID, dash B for band index, dash I to create gist and the special index, M to run vacuum analyze, C to set standard of constraints, and a lot more skill. Dash S SRID for three to six. Index vacuum analyze. Standard constraints. Then D here. T if that was a file we want to upload to the uh, postgis. Dash F. Then we have option of tiling it, which is dash T. B one hundred by hundred. Tie the rest tie to hundred by hundred. Depends on. But this is just the least acceptable parameters. And let's pipe it. So this piping is a Unix command that helps to run multiple queries. So we can actually save this because this Rasta to PGS is just helping us to convert um, this process into an SQL command. That's basically what it's doing. So this is going to convert the Rasta data into an SQL command, the Rasta to PGS So I can actually save this. Let's see in it demo.sql. And when I press enter, it's going to process the DEM for us with all these parameters and save it in demo.sql. So if I open this demo.sql, you're going to see the command. You can see create stable DEM, raster, rast, um, data type, insert it to DEM, these are the values, then the raster constraints. The one we the dash C is that the constraints the in raster. Then the created uh, index, create index on the using just XT convex of. So this is what the dash I is doing. So, so vacuum analyze the this is what the dash M is doing. So this command is just to help us convert a raster data into a set of SQL commands. That's basically what raster to PGS creators. But that's not what we want. We want to be able to see the raster data in PostGIS. You can just copy this and run this command in PostGIS. But it's just better to do it directly from here, from the command line too. So that's the beauty of it. Let's go back to the previous one and instead of saving it in the demo.sql. And by the way, way back I, I used my uh, page up key. So go back to previous commands. Uh, arrow up and arrow down key. So instead of sending it to demo.sql, you can just use this command piping, this pipe command. It's above your enter key. So pipe command, and I use psql. So psql is also another command line. So for example, when you install post, Postgres PG admin, it comes with it. It's used for accessing and for database management from the command line. So, so instead of using the PG admin, you can do basically all what you do on the PG admin, which is this one right here. So, for example, I can check the number of tables I have on my database. You can do all sorts of operations. So that's that. So PSQL. So this is to help us connect to Postgres. So after this command is done, it can just put it to Postgres directly. So PSQL, then the database is Postgres. Then the host is localhost. If you are pushing to a remote computer, there used to be the IP address of that computer you are pushing the data set to. The username is Postgres. Port, if you want to add the port dash p5433. So, all this I've got in the installation of Postgres. 
like I said, I have a video on how to install postages. So when you install postages, you get all this information like database and the like. So I'll drop the link in the description below so you can check it out and install it if you haven't already. So everything is fine already. You can just press enter and run the script. So you can see the processing is done for the script. With as Python moves to connecting it to PostGIS. So that's why it's asking for my password for Postgres. So let me input my password. So this is basically the script that is inside the SQL. Begin, create table, and the command is running. It's pushing the right start to PostGIS. Minimize this now and go to post just to um, post just to uh, confirm the upload. So I didn't specify the file name or schema, so it's record it's recording to public um, automatically. So I wonder the tables so should be here already. Is there can just refresh this? You can say perfect. It's here already. So let's go back to QGIS. Let me remove the previous one. how to connect QGIS to PostGIS so that was where I made this connection I also drop the link in the description below so you can, you can check how to do that so my QGIS is connected to PostGIS and you can just pull this DEM from PostGIS now back to QGIS by right clicking on it and add a layer to project so QGIS is going to connect to Postgres and pull the data set. Perfect. So this is it. So it's just as easy as that. Any other thing you want to do is just to add more commands or start to PGSQL. So a lot of commands that you can add depends on what you want to do. But those are the least a separate command before you can make a transaction with the command line tool. So thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful to you and I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up and thank you. See you next time. Bye.